Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Gerard and I'm outside on the farm here on the Western Cape. This farmer has a lot of problem with geese and this is why I am here with my two friends today. We're going to go out there and see if we can help him out. We've got some center fires that we're going to use for today's hunt. Uh, one of them is going to be this gun that is sitting on my lap, it's a 22250 ticker. Uh, we've got a 223 and we've got a 22 rimfire also in the back of the truck. And we're going to use these three rear rifles for this pest control job for today. So I'm very excited. I've got my scope camera on my on my Element Optics Titan scope, and I'm going to record as much as I can so you can enjoy it with me. So I'm going to get my validation quickly and see if the gun is still zeroed, and then we're going to get started. The three guns we'll be using today will be the 22250 ticker and we've got a 223 as well and a CZ22 rimfire just for the shorter range shots. Baron spots a goose right up in the horizon and takes the first shot of the day but unfortunately just misses over the top. Right. Obviously I need to talk about my gun setup for today. It's a 22250, it's a Tika T3 and uh, I'm shooting Hornady VMAX rounds out of it, 55 grains at 3450 feet per second average. Um, perfect setup for vomiting, especially if when you want to shoot uh, geese and small animals with this gun. Out to long range, very very fine with, 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 with accuracy. The only critic I've got, like most of you maybe know out there, when there's a little bit more wind involved on the shot, it's more critical where you hold with this gun because the 22250 is a small round, so it gets pushed over easily by the wind. But other than that, I think it's a super awesome setup. Uh, the gun works well. I've got a sonic silencer in the front. I've got a scope on the top, the Titan from Element Optics. Awesome scope. Uh, this is an MRAD version. And I've got the APR-1D reticle on the scope. It's very nice, especially for long range, because it's got all the hash marks and the holdover marks for you, and the wind for the windage as well. Perfect for PRS style shooting. So uh, I love it. It's a perfect setup for me. And then lastly, uh, MDT bipod in the front, and then obviously my scope cam setup is sight shot soap scope cam um, from the guys from sight shot scope cam, Thane Simmons and Val Simmons. So. That's my setup for today and uh, very, very excited to start using it. As I was sighting in, I saw a goose came right over the top and landed against the hill and I lined up for my first shot of the day. Perfect, straight down, 298 yards. That is the first goose for the day. And like the saying is, his goose is cooked. Okay. Here we go. This is my Egyptian goose I just shot. Very first one of the day. Nice looking bird. Not going to show too much, but there's a perfect chest shot. And uh, I shot it right down there from the ditch. A long way off uh, this gun is just super super accurate I love this round 2250 is one of my favorite calibers to shoot and uh, you can see why I am so out of breath because I'm I'm not that fit so <laughs> excuse the huffing and puffing here so I'm gonna take this uh, goose down to the truck and we're gonna move along Just before we head out, we just take a minute just to strategize what we're going to do for the rest of the day. This is a very large farm, so we need a plan of attack. As you guys can see here, there's big, big open fields. The farmer's land is all the way to the back hills there in the back, as you can see. And there is a lot of areas that we can explore. So yeah, we're just going to keep on driving nice scenery and it's a nice day it's very very nice to be on the farm today as well
perfect straight down uh, that is a spur wing geese at 192 yards I had to act fast now because I can see he's walking away from me and uh, as he was walking I took the shot got him he just wiggled a bit opened up his wings and he was down Okay, so here we go. Let's get my gun down here. Right, so this is a spurring goose, one of the largest geese species here in South Africa and maybe in the world, I'm not pretty sure, but I know this one uh, is top of the ranks when it comes to the South African side. So, large, large bird. One of the biggest thing, if people speak about these uh, geese, one of the biggest thing is this spike here on the top of the tip of the of the wings. I'll just do a little close up for you guys there so you can see it. Um, you don't want to get cornered by this bird because I promise you this thing will hurt badly once it actually attacks you. Um, I'm just going to flip it over. I can see this little blood trail here. It In the camera shot you can actually see it was walking away from me and I still told my friend Barron, I still said to him, I think he's going to fly because I can see it's like walking ways and getting ready to fly so I had to take the shot quickly um, worked out well I'm just going to see if I can flip it over there we go and it looks like the round is still inside of him um, it will be interesting to see if I can find that round to show you but uh, these VMAX rounds they pretty much expand they pretty much explode on impact it's a it's a vomiting round so very happy with that one. I just want to show you again the size of these birds. Let me just lift it up for you. <coughs> there we go. It is actually very heavy as well. So I'm going to just lay him down and uh, take a couple of snapshots and then I'm going to go back to the truck. That was a nice big uh, spurring goose. Very happy with that. They are tough birds to take down um, because they're large. So I'm very happy with that shot. The idea is to drive around and uh, go to areas on the farm and see where they sit down. Uh, there's a lot of fields and land over here that we can explore. So uh, we're going to just keep on driving. If we spot some geese next to the road, then we're going to stop, take a shot. For the rest of the morning we had another couple of opportunities but unfortunately had some far far shots that we had to do and was very close misses. So it's time to cool off and uh, we're just having a quick break underneath this small little thorn tree here, it's providing a little bit of shade and we've got some uh, monsters some energy drinks that Baron brought with and that will uh, give us a little bit of more energy to keep on going um, these birds all these geese that we shoot sits out, sit out at long ranges so every time we shoot them we have to walk to go fetch them and walk all the way back so that can get tiring after a while I promise you that so yeah just taking a quick break and then we'll we'll carry on Break time over and was back to work again. Bernard picks up the CZ22 rimfire and put it to good use on some guinea fowl and on some doves along the way. It's down. Got it. Oh, lovely. Right through the back. Gonna cook it up tonight. Yeah, a lot of nice meat. Lovely. Without seeing any further geese on this side of the farm, we decided to move along to another location, which the farmer told us he saw a lot of geese as well. 
there's some spurring geese at 560 yards and there is some wind as well here the wind comes from the right to the left up there it could be different um, especially on a long range like this the wind calls here won't be the same down there so I've just got to use my instinct and see how it plays out um, and see how we go yeah That was very close, very, very close. I think we had the range a little bit wrong. Could have also been that we've knocked one of the small little embankments because there's a lot of embankments on the land here. But that was very close, it's just over the top. When you're shooting in hills and valleys, ranging your target can become a little bit tricky, especially when there's a lot of embankments or any shrubbery in the way. So you can really, really miss your target if you're not very precise with your ranging. Baron lines up for the next shot, but unfortunately also just misses right over the top. Just over the top. We saw some geese flying to a close by a dam and we decided to make our way over there but on arrival we saw that the geese has already left but there were some yellow billed ducks on the water and we needed something for the dinner tonight. I know, I know, 22250 might be a little bit overkill for a small little duck, but that's all that we had in the spur of the moment. So yeah, got a yellow billed duck, lovely meat. This one is definitely going home. 2250 made quick play of that. Lacquer. Two hundred and ninety-one yards. Uh, see a spurring geese sitting right on top of a branch. See if I can take him down. Get mine. Oh, that is a perfect shot. Dropped like a rock. That is amazing. Straight down. I'm going to go down there quickly and retrieve it. Awesome. Right, 
Here we go, another spurwing goose. Beautiful, nice and big. He was sitting right up here on the top of that branch. There was two of them sitting side by side. But uh, yeah, he dropped like a stone. That was a, that was a perfect, perfect shot. Feeling satisfied that we helped out the farmer quite a bit today, we put away the work rifles and took out the 6.5 millimeters just to finish off the day and to have some fun. Well, the sun is setting behind the mountain there behind us here now. And that is where I'm going to call it an end. I want to thank you guys for joining us. It was a real fun day today here on the farm. We managed to shoot some of the geese out for the farmer. So he's also very happy. And then just from my side, I want to tell my two best friends, Bernard and Barnen, thank you very much for coming along. I had a super fun time. And you guys are superstars. So, yeah. And for all you guys that's watching this video, thank you for watching it. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.